Our next system is the respiratory system. So kindly familiarize with what are the parts of your respiratory system. We have your nose, epiglottis, trachea, bronchus, and your lung. And then uh, later, we will go deeper with what are the specific parts of these parts. Okay? Our respiratory system is the network of organs and tissues that help you breathe. This system helps your body absorb oxygen. So basically, this is the process of um, respiration, kindly referred to the uh, illustration. Your uh, respiratory system helps our body absorb oxygen from the air so that our organs can work because oxygen is needed by your body so that it can produce ATP or energy. It also cleans waste gases such as carbon dioxide from your blood. The process of respiration includes ventilation or breathing, which is the movement of air into and out of your lungs, exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide, then the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide in your blood, and finally, the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between your blood and tissues. So basically, your respiratory system and your circulatory system, just like your lymphatic system, usapa ini yang abugto itong respiratory system. There are five functions. We have gas exchange, breathing, sound production, because there's your voice box, your larynx, olfactory assistance or the sense of smell, and protection from dust and microbes entering the body through mucus production, cilia, and coughing. What is cilia? This one, cilia. Or later, I will tell you what cilia is. Okay, let's start with the parts. So we have here your nose or nostrils. Your nose is involved in several important bodily functions. First, it allows air to enter your body other than your mouth. So sometimes, kung punong-puno ng sipo ng ilong mo, nagma-mouth breathing ka, ino-open mo yung mouth mo, doon na lang dumadaan yung hangin. Then, it also contributes to how you look and how you sound when you speak. So, what does that mean? If your nose is very big or your nose is very small, and particularly in Filipinos, if your nose is pango, or it has something or it has an effect on how you speak and of course, how you look. So, some of us, some of us, ako kasali, waray ko kwarta, ipapa nose lift. Those, um, who are in movies, mga artista, mga celebrity, mga high profile, mga rich people, they can afford nose lift or nose jobs. Your nose also filters and cleans air to remove particles and allergens. It also shows that our nose has hair inside or in, yes, of course, internally we have hair so that it can trap also the other um, foreign objects, dirt, dust, before the air enters finally to our respiratory tract. Then your nose provides a sense of smell. It warms and moistens air so it can move comfortably into your respiratory system. So these are the parts of your nose. You have your nasal bones and the rest is your cartilages. Kaya it's very uh, soft. So if you want to try, you pinch your nose. And you can feel that it is, um, it's, not not, it's not really elastic, but it's soft. It has a soft consistency. Okay. Then you have here, in the middle, this is called your septal cartilage or your nasal septum. And ining ang mga luho, that's what we call ining ang mga guho, nostrils or nares. Okay, what is sinusitis? Okay, this is a very common illness or disease when it comes to or a condition that is very common in relation to the anatomical structure of our nose. Okay, sinusitis is an inflammation or swelling of the tissues lining the sinuses here. So this is your sinuses. We have your we have four different sinuses. We have ethmoid, sphenoid. So when we go through health assessment, you'll be able to uh, palpate those if there is pain then meaning there are or the sinuses are filled with uh, fluid or secretions the sinuses 
or four paired cavities or spaces. O, so, kaya, kaya pwede siyang malagyan ng fluid or secretions kasi those are cavities. What, what does cavities mean? Ibig sabihin spaces. Spaces. This, this supposedly is empty. Wala siyang secretions. O, so, they are connected by narrow channels. The sinuses make thin mucus that drains out of the channels of the nose. The, uh, this drainage helps keep the nose clean and free of bacteria. Okay, the nasolacrimal duct or your tear duct. There, it's located there. Tear ducts are another name of nasolacrimal ducts. They form at the corner of your eye nearest to your nose. They uh, run underneath the skin and connect to your facial bones and nose. So, they drain the tear fluid from the ocular surface. This is responsible for your tears. Or when you cry, your tears come from this area. Okay, excess fluid drains through the tear ducts into the nose. When you have a blocked tear duct, your tears can drain normally, leaving you with a watery, irritated eye. Okay, we also have sneeze reflex. So, we are talking about the things that are related to your nose. Okay, sneezing is a protective reflex just like your cough reflex. And it is sometimes a sign of various medical conditions. Sometimes it is a sign of an allergy or maybe an infection if your sinuses and your um, upper respiratory tract is or has contracted an infection. A sneeze or sternitation is expulsion of air from the lungs through the nose and mouth, most commonly caused by irritation of nasal mucosa. What is nasal mucosa? The linings of your nose. Sneezing can further be triggered through sudden exposure to a bright light, a particularly full stomach, and physical stimulants of trigeminal nerve as a result of central nervous system pathologies such as epilepsy, posterior inferior cerebral artery syndrome, or as a symptom of psychogenic pathologies. Next is pharynx. The pharynx, commonly called the throat, is a muscular funnel-shaped uh, passageway inside the body. Where is it? Where's your pharynx? So, oh, here. So, your pharynx is composed of your nasal cavity, your nasopharynx, and oropharynx. It connects the mouth and nose. So, you may wonder why your secretions, if you have a uh, cough and colds, your nose sometimes or we experience post nasal drip and your secretions actually flow from your nasal cavity to your mouth because of your pharynx your pharynx is the connection uh, between your mouth and your nose okay mouth and then to the nose and then to the es esophagus diba kasi oh wag nang magdenay pag umuubo ka minsan yung plema mo at yung sipon mo o oh, napupunta sa uh, pharynx and then, hindi mo siya mailabas anywhere kasi maraming tao nakakahiyang dumura o pwede din ay just na lang tinulun <laughs> okay so the pharynx is in the middle of the neck it starts at the bottom of the skull and it's about 4.5 inches long what are the functions of your pharynx? first, it carries air to the respiratory system it delivers food and liquid to the digestive system it pushes food into the esophagus so it is not breathed in hindi siya mapunta sa respiratory system no? it equalizes pressure in the ears and drains fluid from the ears okay these are the primary structures of your pharynx you have your nasopharynx oropharynx your laryngopharynx your tonsils and your eustachian tubes there Then the larynx. The larynx is located within the anterior aspect of the neck, anterior to the inferior uh, portion of the pharynx, and superior to the trachea. So this is your larynx, and your pharynx is above that, over here. So it connects your nose and your mouth, so your larynx is over here. Below that is your uh, larynx. Its primary function is to protect the lower airway by closing abruptly upon mechanical simulation, thereby halting respiration and preventing the entry of foreign matter into airway. Other functions of larynx include the production of sound, orphanation, coughing, the valsalva maneuver, and control of ventilation, and acting as a sensory organ. 
So these are where your vocal cords are. So that is why if uh, a patient has to undergo thyroidectomy, some of them are or after or post-op, after they get the surgery, they get operated, they do not have uh, the ability to speak with the sound. Yes, they have, they can speak, but sometimes their normal vocal sound is temporarily gone or sometimes some of them their vocal sound is gone talaga parang nahuring nala <sighs> ganun nala pakikwajan to oh, because it is a very tricky kind of surgery where your thy uh, thyroid cartilage and your thyroid is actually there so if you're gonna remove the thyroid gland you may hit the larynx or the vocal cords there and the nerves that innervates your vocal cords so very uh, kailangan very very careful damage to the nerves of the larynx can cause hoarseness so this is actually the this is actually the uh, description example nagpa opera kahan thyroidectomy unang una may experience mo post op is hoarseness of your voice okay difficulty in swallowing or breathing or loss of voice Treatment depends on the cause and extent of the uh, laryngeal damage, nerve damage. Damage to the laryngeal nerve can result in loss of voice or obstruction to breathing. There, so these are the nerves that innervate your vocal cords. Marami rami. Oh. So if something or something hits that and it is disrupted, ma-utod, ma-goho, ma-sabod, ayan. So your voice is at stake. What is laryngitis? Laryngitis is an inflammation of your voice box from overuse. O, oh, gituturabani ka, nagikinuro o ka pirmi. Ayan. Irritation or infection. Inside the larynx are your vocal cords, two folds of mucous membranes covering muscle and cartilage. Normally, your vocal cords open and close smoothly. So, this is how your open vocal cord look, looks like. Can you go uh, focus on the illustration I have shown here? So, we have open vocal cords and closed vocal cords. So open and close there. Normally, your vocal cords open and close smoothly, forming sounds through their movement and vibration. The most common cause of laryngitis is a virus. Other types of infection, which are rarely, are bacterial or fungal. Some inhaled medications can be a risk factor of laryngitis. Poor vocal hygiene can lead to laryngitis or inflammation of the vocal cords. Okay, there. So, how can you care for your uh, larynx to prevent and relieve laryngitis? So, you have to breathe moist air. Rest your voice as much as possible. Drink plenty of fluids to prevent dehydration. Avoid alcohol and caffeine. Huwag na muna magkape. Moisten your throat. Avoid decongestants. And avoid whispering. Trachea. The trachea here, okay, is the long tube that connects your larynx or your voice box to your bronchi. Okay, where's your bronchi? This one your bronchi so this is your trachea the trachea is made of rings of cartilage it is lined with cells that produce mucus the mucus keeps allergens dust particles and other debris out of your lungs the trachea serves as a passage for air moistens and warms it while it passes into the lungs and protects the respiratory surface from an accumulation of foreign particles so the trachea is lined with moist mucous membrane layer composed of cells containing small hair-like projections called cilia. Oh, ito na ang definition ng cilia. Bronchi. So, sunod-sunod in here, from upper respiratory parts, we go downward to the lower respiratory system parts. Okay, so we are now at your bronchi. So, from um, your trachea, we go down to your bronchi, and then bronchioles, and then so on and so forth. Okay, so the bronchi are the two large tubes that carry air from your windpipe to your lungs. You have a left and right main bronchus in each lung. So, ang lungs natin at ang mga bronchus down to the bronchioles and then going to your alveoli. It looks like a tree. So, parang observe name parang yung puno. May da main branch, may da smaller branches, and may ada leaves. 
Okay, after the main bronchi, these tubes branch out into segments that look like tree branches. Many respiratory conditions such as asthma or bronchitis can affect your bronchi, which mainly means that if you have asthma, you will have bronchoconstriction. Um, so there will be difficulty in breathing because your airway is constricted. Your bronchi are the large tubes that connect your trachea and direct the air you breathe to the right and left lungs. They are in your chest. Okay, so this is a much clearer and uh, deeper illustration of where your bronchi is. So bronchus and your bronchi. Bronchi is the plural form of uh, bronchus. The left bronchus carries air to the left lung. The right bronchus carries air to the right lung. Your bronchi are an essential uh, part of your respiratory system. As you breathe and your lungs expand, your bronchi distribute the air within your lung. Okay, so when you breathe, air passes from your mouth to your trachea, your trachea to your bronchi, your bronchi carries air to the lungs, and at the end of the bronchi, there is the what we call the small sacs that looks like grapes called alveoli. Okay, so your bronchi carry air uh, and then moisturizes it and screens out the air from foreign particles. So your airways are lined with the cells that create mucus. The mucus keeps your airway moist. It also traps bacteria, viruses, fungi, and other, other particles to protect your lungs and prevent infection. The bronchi are lined with cilia which are tiny hair-like structures. The cilia help move mucus or your phlegm and particles out of your lungs. So, mabuburong ka from your lungs, na extract nim itong plema, na extract nim itong uh, secretions, it's because of the help of your cilia. When you cough or swallow, the particles trapped in the mucus move out of your uh, body or into your digestive tract where your body can dispose of them all right so let's go to the lungs the lungs are located on either side of the breastbone in the chest cavity and are divided into five main sections or lobes so we have three lobes on the right and two lobes on the left the primary function of the lung is the exchange of gases between the body and the environment it contains a series of narrowing passageways again from your nose to your trachea to your um, bronchus and then to your alveoli so that's the lung contains um, this tiny sacs called alveoli which are the very important not necessarily the alveoli but if you ask me what is the most fascinating part i really adore in our body it's not actually the brain but it is one of course the brain but i really love the alveoli during respira uh, respiration, oxygen enters the lungs by diffusion through the capillaries surrounding each alveolar sac. Similarly, when carbon dioxide diffuses out of the blood into the alveolar sacs, contraction of the chest muscles and diaphragm constrict the alveoli, forcing about 0.5 liters of air out of the lungs. Okay, so these are the lobes. We have two lobes for the left and three lobes for the right. Lung lobes can actually be removed if some areas of your lungs are um, very very diseased or let's say dakot diferensya pwede ithiya surgically removed and yet you can still breathe okay take your bronchial tree okay so as i have told you earlier your um, bronchus and your trachea and then the uh, bronchi looks like a tree okay okay so these are the main parts of that we have the trachea bronchus and the bronchi the bronchi branch the bronchi branch of in uh, branch off into smaller bronchi and even smaller tubes called bronchioles okay so here trachea and then your uh, bronchus and then your bronchi and the smaller bronchi are your bronchioles like the branches of a tree, these tiny tubes stretch out into every part of your lungs. Some of them are so tiny that they have the thickness of your hair. You have almost 30,000 bronchioles in each lung. So, dami-dami. 
Okay, each bronchiole naman ends with a cluster of small air sacs called the alveoli, my favorite part. They look like tiny grape unches or very tiny balloons. There are about 600 million alveoli in your lung. So, mamadamu pa hiya kung trahit in bronchioles. Your bronchioles have 30,000. We have 30,000 bronchioles. And we have 600 million alveoli. The small bubble shapes of the alveoli gives your lung a surprising amount of surface area, equivalent to the size of a tennis court. Meaning, pag ilinatag in it, iya surface area, it iya kahaluag ang lapad niya, sing lapad ng tennis court. Kasi nga naman, you have 600 million alveoli. So you wouldn't have expected that. Inside your body, there's a surface area that can actually cover a tennis court. Right? This means there's plenty of room for vital oxygen to pass into your body. There, this is how your alveoli looks like. The alveoli are arranged in clusters throughout the lungs. They sit at the ends of the branches of your respiratory tree. This is the term used to describe a tree-like structure. So, the walls of the alveoli are very thin. This lets oxygen and con uh, carbon dioxide pass easily between the alveoli and capillaries, which are very small blood vessels. Okay, so what are the cells of your alveoli? No, type 1 pneumocytes and type 2 pneumocytes. So type 1 are cells responsible for exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Type 2 are cells that perform two important functions. They produce surfactant, which help keep the balloon in shape and from collapsing. And they can also turn into type 1 cells in order to repair damage. So we have type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes. Okay, so may dat niya sarili nga repair system itun imo alveoli. Because they have, or your alveoli have type 2 uh, pneumocytes. Alveoli also contain immune cells called alveolar macrophages. Macrophages are like the garbage trucks of the immune system, diba? We have talked about this during our lymphatic system discussion. These cells phagocytize and eat debris, okay? Macrophages clean up any particles that are breathed in and make it to the alveoli. They also remove dead cells and bacteria. Okay, so another condition related to your upper respiratory system is asthma. The asthma attack is a sudden worsening of asthma symptoms caused by tightening of muscles around your airways. This is called bronchospasm, wherein your bronchus actually constricts. During the asthma attack, the lining of the airways also becomes swollen, tonahubag, and inflamed. And then it has thicker mucus, which is more than normal. So, you will now have, you will now have cough, shortness of breath, and shortness of breath, and wheezing. And it's wheezing. Wheezing is actually, right, so once we do health assessment or after that, we'll be able to expose ourselves to Apollo. So I'll be bringing you inside there. Apollo has or can exhibit different kinds of breathing um, sounds or breath sounds. Wheezing is one. So para hiyahe na huyok nga na Asthma. There are three major signs of asthma. Okay, we have airway blockage, inflammation, and airway irritability. So this is further discussed, but we have already um, mentioned that here. Okay. Okay, next, we have here the respiratory membrane. The respiratory membrane is the structure gases pass through to move between the alveoli in the lungs and the blood. It is a very thin membrane comprised of alveolar uh, wall and a capillary wall. The respiratory membrane allows gases to cross by simple diffusion, allowing oxygen to be picked up by the blood for transport and carbon dioxide to be released into the air of the alveoli. So here, this is your respiratory membrane and where the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen actually happens so your alveoli next let's go to the respiratory membrane tissue layers 
we have um, the alveolar wall the epithelial basement membrane the capillary basement membrane and the capillary epithelium so these are just the tissue layers that you understand the oxygen and carbon dioxide process to and from what are pleural cavities well let's look at the illustration so pleura ito siya, dito. visceral pleura so your pleura your parietal pleura is here and your visceral pleura is here inner side is your visceral pleura and the outer side is your parietal pleura the pleural cavity is the potential space between the two pleurae so in it in pleural cavity this one can you see the mouse where i'm pointing at okay so this is your pleural cavity there are two layers the outer pleura which is attached to the chest wall and the inner pleura which covers the lungs and adjoining structures via blood vessels bronchi and nerves so the inner part is your visceral and the outer part is your parietal and what is in between them is your pleural cavity what is pleurisy pleurisy is a condition in which the pleura the two large thin layers of tissues that separate your lungs from your chest wall becomes inflamed Okay, also called pleuritis. Pleurisy causes sharp chest pain that worsens during breathing. Okay. What causes this? Most cases are a result of a viral infection or a bacterial, bacterial infection. In rare cases, pleurisy can be caused by conditions such as blood clot, blocking the flow of blood into the lungs, or lung cancer. The lymphatics of the lungs and visceral, uh, visceral pleura drain into the bronchopulmonary lymph nodes. Okay, so we also have lymph nodes here, diba? You have seen that lymph nodes are almost all over your body. Okay, so from here, lymphatics pass to the tracheobronchial uh, bronchial nodes which drain into the bronchomedicinal tract on each side. Okay, so this one is a simpler view of the lymphatics in our lungs. There. So from your trachea down to your bronchus and bronchi. In humans, the main organs responsible for respiration are present in the thoracic cavity. In the thorax region, the rib cage and a dome-shaped fibrous tissue, known as the diaphragm, are observed. Present within the rib cage are the pleural membranes, which enclose the lungs. The right lung is divided into three lobes, the right superior, right middle, and the right inferior lobe. The left lung is smaller and has only two lobes, the left superior and the left inferior lobe. Both the lungs are associated externally with small tubular bronchi which unite and extend into the trachea. The trachea has incomplete C-shaped rings of cartilage, which prevent the tracheal wall from collapsing. The trachea leads into the pharynx, which is connected to the nostrils. As we breathe in air, the oxygen molecules enter the nostrils and travel downwards through the pharynx and trachea to finally reach the bronchi. From each bronchus, oxygen travels into the lungs. Within the lungs, the bronchus divides repeatedly to form bronchioles. Oxygen travels through these bronchioles and reaches the alveoli, each of which is surrounded by a network of capillaries. A section of one alveolus shows the presence of numerous alveolar chambers with pores. Blood, containing RBCs, is seen flowing through the capillaries. The oxygen molecules from the alveolus diffuse into the capillary and then get absorbed by the bluish-purple RBCs, 
This causes oxygenation of the RBCs, and a transition in their color from bluish purple to red is observed. The blood moving into the alveolus contains RBCs in carbon dioxide molecules. These molecules are released into the alveolus. The carbon dioxide collects in the alveolar chamber. And then from the alveolus, it travels through the bronchioles. Into the bronchus, which finally reaches the trachea, and is breathed out through the nostrils. So the process of breathing in air rich in oxygen is called inhalation. After the contraction of the muscular diaphragm, the lungs expand and the air rushes in, resulting in the inflation of the alveoli. During exhalation, the diaphragm moves up and the lungs contract. Thus, the alveoli deflate, causing the air to be forced out. This exhaled air is rich in carbon dioxide. This process of inhalation and exhalation is known as respiration, which is approximately 20 times per minute. Okay, so what is pulmonary ventilation or ventilation? Basically, it's your breathing. It is the process of air flowing into the lungs during inspiration and out of the lungs during expiration, which is your inhale and exhale. Air flows because of pressure differences between the atmosphere and the gases inside your lungs. So there are two pressures we're talking about that's outside and inside your lungs. So outside and inside your body. Okay, air, like other gases, flows from a region with higher pressure to a region with lower pressure. Muscular breathing movements and recoil of elastic tissues create the changes in pressure that results in ventilation. Pulmonary ventilation involves three different pressures. We have first, atmospheric pressure, intraalveolar pressure, the pressure that is inside the alveoli and the intrapleural pressure so these are defined over here just read through it maintindihan naman from the name parang self-explanatory na siya okay how does thoracic volume or what are the factors that affect thoracic volume so during breathing the contraction and relaxation of muscles acts to change the volume of the thoracic cavity as the thoracic cavity and lungs move together, these, uh, this changes the volume of the lungs, in turn changing the pressure inside the lungs. So what happens when the thoracic volume decreases? Kun habubo, the decrease of pressure in the thoracic cavity relative to environment makes the cavity pressure less than the atmospheric pressure. This pressure gradient between the atmosphere and the thor uh, thoracic cavity allows air to rush into the lungs. So, if your thoracic volume decreases, it means that you need to inhale, okay? The muscles of inspiration include the diaphragm and the muscles that elevate the ribs and sternum, such as your external intercostals. The diaphragm is a large dome of skeletal muscle that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. So, your uh, diaphragm serves as a banig, para siyang banig or separator. So, dito, on the lower uh, part, or your digestive system and then it separates it from your respiratory system the muscles of expiration such as the internal uh, intercostals depress the ribs and the sternum so here we have end of inspiration and expiration if you are breathing for intercostal spaces and your rib cage expands if you exhale, force it constricts or na relax, as well as your diaphragm. So pag nag exhale ka, nag exhale ka, maigbaw ito ni mo diaphragm. Kaya ano? Pinupush din niya yung air outside your airway. So if you are trying to inhale, of course your diaphragm is contracting, so it moves a little bit downward to accumulate or to to give space 
to the air that you are trying to um, breathe in. Pressure changes and air flow. The two physical principles govern the flow of air into and out of the lungs. So first is changing in uh, changes in volume result in changes in pressure. As the volume of a container increases, the pressure within the container decreases. The opposite is also true. As the volume of a container decreases, the pressure within the container increases. So, balik tadi yan. Kung na-increase itong volume, na-decrease itong pressure. Kung na-decrease itong volume or itong salud, na-increase itong pressure. Okay? In the same way, the muscles of respiration change the volume of the thorax and therefore the pressure within the thoracic cavity. Second, so first again, ha, changes in volume result in changes in pressure. Next is air flows from an area of higher pressure to an area of a lower pressure. If the pressure is higher at one end of a tube than the other, air or fluid flows from the area of higher pressure toward the area of lower pressure. The greater the pressure difference, the greater the rate of air flow. Air flows through the respiratory passages because of pressure differences between the outside of the body and the alveoli inside the body. These, pressures, uh, these pressure differences are produced by changes in the thoracic volume. Okay, so the volume and pressure changes responsible for one cycle of inspiration and expiration, meaning your inhalation and exhalation, isang cycle niyan, are as follows. So, ha? kindly try to follow the direction of our um, discussion. We are now discussing the volume and pressure inside and outside the body and your lungs so that we will understand why our body is actually trying to breathe even we sleep we breathe even if we do not want to breathe we really breathe because we need it and it keeps us alive okay first the volume and pressure changes are responsible for okay so as described as first huh so the reason why there is volume and pressure changes at the end of expiration at the end of expiration meaning after you exhale alveolar pressure which is the air pressure within or inside the alveoli is equal to the atmospheric pressure which is the air pressure outside your body so tapos ka naman nag exhale ka na so there is no air movement no air moves into or out of the lungs because your alveolar pressure and atmospheric pressures are equal during inspiration Contraction of muscles of inspiration increases the volume of the thoracic cavity. So, the increased thoracic volume causes the lungs to expand. Natural. Pag inhale nim, itim thoracic volume, meaning ang sulod nga hangin, han im lungs, inoccupy na dida. So, ma expand iton imo lungs, resulting in increase in alveolar volume. Okay? As the alveolar volume increases, alveolar pressure becomes less than atmospheric pressure and air flows from outside the body through the respiratory passages to the alveoli. Third is the end of inspiration. So, kahuman ni mag-inhale, katapos ni mag-inhale, the thorax and alveoli stop expanding. When the alveolar pressure and atmospheric pressure becomes equal, air flow stops. Then, pag exhale the demanim, this is a cycle, ha? kaya nga one cycle. During expiration, the thoracic volume decreases. Why na decrease? Kasi ito yung volume, anim volume, anim salud, im na iginawas. Ang hangin, im na, im na iginawas. Producing a corresponding decrease in alveolar volume. Consequently, alveolar pressure increases above atmospheric pressure and air flows from the alveoli through the respiratory passages to the outside. Okay, so what is lung recoil? During quiet expiration, thoracic volume and lung volume decreases because of lung recoil. It is the tendency 
for an expanded lung to decrease in size. So you may wonder, kay ano nga pa ulit-ulit ang nga ginhawa? Because you have lung recoil. The tendency for your expanded lung, meaning the tendency of your lungs to decrease in size, ngin nasusudlan hiya, hin hangin. Diba madako hiya? Kay may dahangin nga im isinulod. So automatic hiya nga ma decrease in size or ma recoil. Para ititun nga hangin, mahigwa. Okay? The thoracic wall also recoils due to the elastic properties of its, its tissues. Lung recoil is able to occur because the connective tissue of the lungs contain elastic fibers and because the film of fluid lining the alveoli has surface tension. Surface tension exists because the oppositely charged ends of water molecules are attracted to each other. As the water molecules pull together, they also pull on the alveolar walls, causing the alveoli to recoil and become smaller. Here, ha? the two factors that keep your lungs from collapsing. Ano collapsing? Diri na hiya ma lobo, ngan ma diri na mahiya, diri na hiya ma expand, ngan ma decrease it ya size. Okay, so what is a surfactant? Surfactant is a mixture of lipoprotein molecules produced by secretory cells of the alveolar epithelium or your lining, the lining of your alveoli. The surfactant molecules form a single layer on the surface of the thin fluid layer lining the alveoli. Then it reduces your surface tension. Without the surfactant, the surface tension causing the alveoli to recoil, diba? to expand and then uh, decrease in size, that's your recoil, can be 10 times greater than when surfactant is present. Thus, surfactant greatly reduces the, uh, the tendency of the lungs to collapse. And the pleural pressure. When the pressure in the pleural cavity is less than the alveolar pressure, the alveoli tends to expand. This principle can be understood by considering a balloon. So the balloon expands when the pressure outside Outside it is less than the pressure inside it. The pressure difference is normally achieved by increasing the pressure inside the balloon by blowing into it. This pressure difference, however, can also be achieved by decreasing the pressure outside of the balloon. For example, so other than huhuy panim itong balloon, pwede gihap itong outside pressure itong balloon ibahunim. For example, if the balloon is placed in a chamber from which air is removed, the pressure around the balloon becomes lower than the atmospheric pressure, and the balloon expands. The lower the pressure outside the balloon, the greater the tendency for the higher pressure inside the balloon to cause it to expand. In a similar fashion, decreasing pleural pressure can result in expansion of the alveoli. Normally, the alveoli are in the expanded state because pleural pressure is lower than the alveolar pressure. Pleural pressure is lower than the alveolar pressure because of a suction effect caused by fluid removal by the lymphatic system and by lung recoil. Diba kanina? And M lymph. Nalabay gihap nga dihan lungs. As the lungs recoil, the visceral and parietal pleurae tend to be pulled apart. Normally, the lungs do not pull away from the thoracic wall because the pleural fluid holds the visceral and parietal pleurae uh, together. Nonetheless, this pull decreases pressure in the pleural cavity. You can appreciate this effect by putting water on the palms of your hands and then placing them together. As you gently pull your hands apart, you will feel a sensation of negative pressure. Parang meron siyang pull. So, paro hiya hit, may da magnet, nga magdudukot lagi up hiya. Okay? Changing alveolar volume. Changes in alveolar volume cause the change in alveolar pressure that are responsible for moving air into and out of the lungs. Alveolar volume changes result from changes in pleural uh, pressure. For example, during inspiration, pleural pressure decreases and the alveoli expand. 
respiratory volumes and capacities so what is spirometry spirometry is the process of measuring volume so we actually use a spirometer so that we can measure the volumes of air that goes into and outside of our respiratory system okay measurements of the respiratory volumes can provide information about the health of the lungs so if if a person has copd lung cancer pinahuhuyop hera kagulawan naman kung gaano kadamo ng hangin ang era na nahuyop na igawas so respiratory volumes are measures of the amount of air movement during the different portions of ventilation whereas respiratory capacities are sums of two or more respiratory volumes okay what are these terms so we have the tidal volume which is the volume of air na in inhale and in exhale mo in one cycle of breath at rest quiet breathing results in tidal volume of 500 milliliters inspiratory reserve volume what is inspiratory reserve volume it is the amount of air that can be ha? and pwede pwede nim ma inhale so inspiratory reserve volume is the amount of air that can be inspired forcefully beyond the resting tidal volume expiratory reserve volume is the amount of air na pwede mong i-exhale forcefully beyond the resting tidal volume. Residual volume is the volume of air still remaining in the respiratory passages and lungs after maximum expiration. Now, we will be talking about the capacity. Ibig sabihin ng capacity, ang kayang mahold, yung kayang masustain, yung kayang laman, yung kayang dami. Functional residual capacity is the expiratory reserve volume plus the residual volume. This is the amount of air remaining in the lungs at the end of a normal expiration. So, that's a functional residual capacity so it is 2300 ml when you are at rest inspiratory capacity is the tidal volume plus the inspiratory reserve volume this is the amount of air a person can inhale maximally after a normal expiration at rest so the vital capacity naman is the sum of the respiratory reserve volume, the tidal volume, and the expiratory reserve volume. It is the maximum volume of air that a person can expel from the respiratory tract after a maximum inspiration. The total lung capacity is the sum of the inspiratory and expiratory reserves and the tidal and residual volumes. The total lung capacity is also equal to the vital capacity plus the residual volumes. Factors such as sex, age, and body size influence the respiratory volumes and capacities. Of course, if you are bigger or on the big side, there is uh, lesser uh, volumes of air that you can inhale and exhale as well. The vital capacity of adult females is usually 20 to 25 less than that of adult uh, males. The vital capacity reaches its maximum amount in young adults and gradually decreases pag ikaw ay nalagas na. So tall people usually have greater vital capacity than short people and thin people have greater vital capacity than obese people. Well-trained athletes can have a vital capacity of 30 to 40% above that of untrained people. In patients whose respiratory muscles are paralyzed by spinal cord injury or diseases such as poliomyelitis or muscular dystrophy, the vital capacity can be reduced to values not consistent with survival. So, pwede kang mamatay pag ikaw ay may muscular dystrophy. Why? Kailangan mo yung muscles, your respiratory muscles, so that you can breathe. Diba? Kailangan mag-contract at mag-expand. 
let's go to gas exchange the major area of gas exchange is in the alveoli although some takes place in the respiratory bronchioles and alveolar ducts gas exchange between blood and air does not occur in other areas of the respiratory passageways so dirihiya na occur hit imotrachea it doesn't occur in your bronchus or your bronchi the only area that gas exchange happens in is the alveoli doon lang po the volume of these passageways is therefore called anatomical dead space. First is the respiratory membrane thickness. Yan. Siyempre, kung makapal, iba, mas makuri iton uh, transfer of air or air passage. Makuri yung makaagi. Ay, ma madakmal. The thickness of the respiratory membrane increases during certain respiratory diseases. For example, in patients with pulmonary edema, fluid accumulates in the alveoli and gases must diffuse through a thicker than normal layer of fluid. If the thickness of the respiratory membrane is doubled or tripled, the rate of gas exchange is markedly decreased. Oxygen exchange is affected before carbon dioxide exchange because O2 diffuses through the respiratory membrane about 20 times less easily than does carbon dioxide. The total surface area of the respiratory membrane is about 70 square meters. Wala siyang sinabi sa surface area ng alveoli mo na 600 uh, million kasi naki ng tennis court. It is approximately the floor area of a 25 by 30 feet room or roughly the size of a rocket ball court under resting conditions uh, decrease in the surface area of the respiratory membrane to one third or one fourth of normal can significantly restrict gas exchange okay so during strenuous exercise even small decreases in surface area of the respiratory membrane can adversely affect gas exchange so if ikaw ay may sakit sa lungs ikaw ay chain smoker there are areas in your lungs that are not functioning well your surface area decreases so it affects the gas exchange and the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide that your body should have inhaled and exhaled okay possible reasons for having a decreased surface area include surgical removal of a lung tissue diba? we have five lobes of the lungs two on the left and three on the right so if one lobe is removed of course the surface area will decrease thereby affecting gas exchange the destruction of lung tissue by cancer and the de degeneration of the alveolar walls by emphysema. Collapse of the lung, as of course in pneumothorax, dramatically reduces the volume of the alveoli as well as the surface area for gas exchange. So what is partial pressure? Gas molecules move randomly from higher concentration, I guess so that is from higher pressure to a lower pressure. So, higher concentration to lower concentration until an equilibrium is achieved or an equal status is achieved. One measurement of the concentration of gases is partial pressure. The partial pressure of a gas is the pressure exerted by a specific gas in a mixture of gases such as air. It is traditional to designate the partial pressure of individual gases in a mixture with a capital P followed by the symbol for gas. Thus, the partial pressure of O2 is PO2 and that of CO2 is PCO2. Partial pressure of oxygen and partial pressure of carbon dioxide. When air is in contact with a liquid, gases in the air dissolve in the liquid. The gases dissolve until the partial pressure of each gas in the liquid is equal to the partial pressure of that in the air. Gases in a liquid, like gases in the air, Diffuse from areas of higher partial pressure toward areas of lower partial pressure until the partial pressures of the gases twister <laughs> until the partial pressures of the gases are equal throughout the liquid. In other words, gases diffuse down their pressure gradient. When atmospheric air comes into contact with the water-based fluid in the lungs, carbon dioxide and O2 or oxygen dissolve in the fluid and each diffuses down to its pressure gradient. Okay, what is rhythmic breathing? The normal rate of breathing in adults is 12 to 20 breaths per minute. In children, it is 
higher, so that's 20 to 40 per minute. The rate of breathing is determined by the number of times respiratory muscles are stimulated. The basic rhythm of breathing is controlled by your medulla oblongata and the other one is pons. The pons also has something to do with breathing that stimulate the muscles of respiration. An increased depth of breathing results from stronger contractions of the respiratory muscles caused by recruitment of muscle fibers and increased frequency of stimulation of muscle fibers. So touch, thermal, pain receptors in the skin can also stimulate respiratory center. So, kung ikaw kinalasan, ikaw nahanginan, hindi oras, natakbuhan ka, hin, mataghum, di ba? Naginhawa ka daw, hin kakaiba, naginhawa ka halaro, nagasp ka hin air, whatever your reaction is. Alright, so what is herring brewer reflex? The herring brewer reflex supports rhythmic respiratory movements by limiting the extent of inspiration. What is the meaning of reflex? Again, it is your body's own protection of you know anything that is happening to you. So, in terms of herring brewer reflex, it supports your rhythmic respiratory movements. Ibig sabihin rhythmic, parang balance, may rhythm, may ada niya um, beat kung habaga, okay? As the muscles of inspiration contract, the lungs fill with air. Sensory receptors that respond to stretch are located in the lungs, and as the lungs fill with air, the stretch receptors are stimulated. Then we have action potential. So na mention aliwat ini. We have talked about this on our discussion for um, the muscular system, the skeletal system, the nervous system. So we hear action potentials uh, or action potential as a word. Parang familiar na ganun kamo. Sana, ano? Or question mark lagi ha pa. Kamo na bahala. Okay. Action potentials from the lungs. Stretch receptors are then sent to the medulla oblongata where they inhibit the respiratory center neurons and cause expiration. So, iningay an inhiya. It nakakapa. Inhale, in, exhale, liwa taatun. Labot lahi tong changes hit atmospheric pressure na hin. Uh, alveolar pressure. In infants, the herring brewer reflex plays an important role in regulating the basic rhythm of breathing and preventing overinflation. Overinflation, ang pag lubuhin ora ora, hit imo lungs, labin hit im alveoli. In adults, however, the reflex is important only when the tidal volume is large, as of course during heavy exercise. What are the chemicals that control your breathing? Chemicals inside your body, ha, dire outside. Breathing is also influenced by variations in blood chemistry. It is affected by the activity of respiratory center and adjust ventilation proportionate to actual metabolic demands. They are complex sensors and respond to both, so hydrogen ion concentration and to the partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood. Hypercapnia is the buildup of carbon dioxide, meaning damo it carbon dioxide in your bloodstream. It affects people who have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And if you have COPD, you can breathe as easily as other people do. You need assistance. You need, op uh, you need oxygen therapy if you have COPD. So there are a lot of causes and risk factors um, where and how people develop COPD. So let's just discuss that when we do health assessment. Okay, next is hypoxia. Hypoxia is a state in which oxygen is not available in sufficient amounts uh, at the tissue level to maintain adequate homeostasis. This can result from in inadequate oxygen delivery to the tissues, either due to low blood supply or low oxygen content in the blood. So that's hypoxia. Okay, so that's low blood supply or low oxygen content. Uh, hypoxia. The main chemoreceptors involved in respiratory feedback are uh, central chemoreceptors. They detect changes in the pH or the acidity and alkalinity of your spinal fluid. Okay? They can be desensitized over time from chronic hypoxia and increased carbon dioxide. The central chemoreceptors modulate respiration based on changes in um, carbon dioxide pH detected in the brain, whereas the peripheral chemoreceptors, which act faster, sense changes in the periphery. 
Okay, so let's look at this table. We have here the different breathing patterns. We have eupnea, which is the normal breathing pattern. Tachypnea is the increased respiratory rate. Bradypnea, decreased respiratory rate. Apnea, oh, patay ka na. Wala kang breathing. Hyperpnea, increased depth and rate of breathing. Kinase strokes are the gradual increases and decreases in respirations with periods of apnea. So look at the uh, look at the pattern. So breathe, breathe, breathe. So minsan mabilis, minsan ma mabagal. Tapos may portions na wala kang hininga. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Walang hininga. Breathe, breathe, breathe. That's kinase strokes. Then we have biots or biots respiration abnormal breathing pattern with groups or clusters of rapid respiration of equal depth and regular apnea periods. Then we have the cosmos. Cosmos are tachypnea and hyperpnea. Okay. Then we have apnea stick or the prolonged inspiratory phase with a prolonged expiratory phase. So, ganon. Oh, practice nyo na lang kung paano yan. Practice kayo mag-inhale and exhale and follow the pattern. And these are how they are called. Now, what are the effects of exercise on breathing? When you exercise and your muscles work harder, your body uses more oxygen and produces more car carbon dioxide. Okay, so to cope with this extra demand, your breathing has to increase from about 15 times a minute when you are resting and about 40 to 60 times a minute during exercise. Regular exercise helps us prevent chronic lung disease. So exercise improves your lung capacity. It increases um, the blood flow to your lungs, allowing the lungs to deliver more oxygen into the blood. Then here are the effects of aging on our respiratory system. Malagas ka na nga na yung decrease ito yung mga more natanan, yung body processes, yung mga not necessarily body parts, but how your body parts actually function. It is more on a decline. So, na decline yeah. Aging effects most Aging affects most aspects of the respiratory system, but even though vital capacity, maximum ventilation rates, and gas exchange decrease with age, the elderly can engage in light to moderate exercise because the respiratory has a large reserve capacity. With age, mucus accumulates within the respiratory passageways. The mucus cilia escalator is less efficient, so asig na mapuri itong lagas, mahuwasan, heat, ubo, Labi na kong pneumonia na, kahit kinahanglan na yung mag-expel, hanin mo plema. At kahit nakakapa-expel ito yung plema, diba? Hanin mo silia. Kasi ito yung ang nag-expel, hanin mo plem. So, it is less efficient because the mucus becomes more viscous. So, mas malapot. And the number of cilia and the rate of movement decreases. As a consequence, the elderly are more susceptible to respiratory infections and bronchitis. Vital capacity decreases, so this is related to weakening of respiratory muscles and stiffening of cartilage and ribs when you are aging. Residual volume increases because parts of the alveolar walls are lost, which decreases the surface area available for gas exchange. And the remaining walls thicken, which decreases the diffusion of gases. A gradual increase in resting tidal volume with age compensates for these changes. So that's the last slide for our respiratory system. Pulmonary ventilation, commonly referred to as breathing, is the process of air flowing in and out of the lungs during inspiration and expiration. The air movements are governed by the principles of gas laws. Basically, air flows from higher to lower pressure. Pressure within a cavity increases when its volume decreases and vice versa. Volume of a given amount of gas increases with increased temperature. At rest, in between breaths, the pressure inside the lungs, or intrapulmonary pressure, equals the pressure outside of the body, or atmospheric pressure. When discussing respiratory pressures, this is generally referred to as a relative pressure of zero. This is because what matters is the difference between the two pressures, not their absolute values. Thus, a negative pressure is a pressure below atmospheric, while a positive pressure is above atmospheric. 
The lungs are covered in a double layer membrane which forms a thin space surrounding the lungs called the pleural cavity. The pressure within the pleural cavity, or intrapleural pressure, is normally negative. This negative pressure acts like a suction to keep the lungs inflated. If this becomes zero, such as in the case of pneumothorax, when the chest wall is punctured and the pleural cavity has the same pressure as the outside air, the lung would collapse. Pulmonary ventilation is achieved by rhythmically changing the volume of the thoracic cavity. During inspiration, the diaphragm and the external intracostal muscles contract, expanding the thoracic cavity and the lungs. This increase in volume results in a decrease in pressure, causing outside air to flow in. Another factor that helps to inflate the lungs is the warming of the inhaled air. This effect is most notable on a cool day when the temperature outside is significantly lower. The inhaled air increases in volume as it warms up inside the body and inflates the lungs, further facilitating inhalation. While inspiration requires muscular contraction and hence energy expenditure, expiration during quiet breathing is a passive process. As the diaphragm returns to its original position and the muscles relax, Thoracic and lung volumes decrease and pressures increase, pushing air out of the lungs. Quiet expiration relies therefore on the elasticity of the lungs and ribcage, their ability to spring back to the original dimensions. Conditions that reduce pulmonary elasticity, such as emphysema, can cause difficulty exhaling. Alveoli your airways and alveoli are flexible and springy. When you breathe in, each air sac inflates like a small balloon. And when you exhale, the sacs deflate. Small blood vessels called capillaries surround your alveoli. Oxygen from the air you breathe passes into your capillaries. Then carbon dioxide from your body passes out of your capillaries into your alveoli so that your lungs can get rid of it when you exhale. If you have pneumonia, your airways or lungs have an infection caused by germs, such as bacteria, viruses, fungi, or parasites. Your airways catch most germs in the mucus that lines your trachea, bronchi, and bronchioles. Hair-like cilia lining the tubes constantly push the mucus and germs out of your airways, where you may expel them by coughing. Sometimes germs make it past your mucus and cilia and enter your alveoli. Normally, cells of your immune system attack these germs, which keep them from making you sick. However, if your immune system is weakened due to age, illness, or fatigue, pneumonia-causing germs can overwhelm your immune cells and begin to multiply. Your bronchioles and alveoli become inflamed as your immune system attacks the multiplying germs. The inflammation causes your alveoli to fill with fluid, making it difficult for your body to get the oxygen it needs. Gas exchange is the major purpose of the respiratory system. Inhaled air unloads oxygen and picks up carbon dioxide in the alveoli of the lungs, while the blood picks up oxygen and unloads carbon dioxide. The oxygenated blood then travels to body's tissues, where the reverse process happens. In the lungs, the gases move across a very thin respiratory membrane, which consists of alveolar squamous cells endothelial cells of blood capillaries, and their fused basement membranes. The exchange of gases occurs due to simple diffusion as they flow down their concentration gradient or partial pressure gradient. Atmospheric air is a mixture of gases, each of which independently contributes to its total pressure. The pressure of each individual gas is known as partial pressure. The atmospheric pressure is the sum of all partial pressures of gases that make up its content. The direction of gas movement from one area to another is determined by the difference in its partial pressure. A gas always moves from higher to lower partial pressure. Atmospheric air is brought into the lungs through inhalation, but the lungs are not completely emptied and replaced with outside air with each cycle of breathing. 
In fact, only a relatively small portion of air in the alveoli is refreshed with each breath. This makes the air composition in the alveoli significantly different from that of inhaled air. The gas exchange in the lungs occurs between this alveolar air and the blood in capillaries. Because the volume of blood in pulmonary capillaries at any moment is much smaller than the total volume of air in the alveoli, the gas exchange process essentially brings partial pressures of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the blood to the same levels as those in alveolar air. It is therefore important that the composition of alveolar air is closely monitored and adjusted to maintain the same values. The body does just that. If carbon dioxide levels increase or oxygen levels drop, the airways automatically dilate to bring them back to normal and vice versa. Since gas exchange occurs between the air and the liquid of the blood, the movement of individual gases also depends on their solubility in water. This explains why nitrogen, despite being plentiful in atmospheric and alveolar air, does not diffuse much into the blood. Factors that affect gas exchange include the magnitude of partial pressure gradient. The greater the pressure difference, the more rapid the gas movement. At high altitudes, where partial pressures of all atmospheric gases are lower, the gradient for oxygen is smaller and it needs more time to diffuse into the blood. The thickness of the respiratory membrane. The thinner the membrane, the faster the gas diffuses. Diseases that cause pulmonary edema, such as pneumonia or left-sided heart failure, increase the thickness of respiratory membrane and hinder gas exchange. The amount of gas exchange is directly proportional to the contact surface between the blood and the alveolar air. Diseases that affect alveolar surface, such as emphysema, reduce gas exchange efficiency and produce low blood oxygen levels.